you guys are looking for the cheapest coins on the internet right now, make sure to check out my brand new sponsor, MMO EXP. They have the cheapest coins that you can find anywhere on the internet. Use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. What's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys. Today, I'm going to be going over the top 5 level masters I hope for slash expect for Madden 21. Now, guys, sorry this video is going up so late. It should have went up yesterday or even the day before. My power is now went out at me two days in a row while filming and then never came back on until late at night. So this is day three of trying to record a video. Had a bunch of power issues around where I live right now. Storms and a whole bunch of stuff that's been going on. But hopefully we can get this video done. If you guys are seeing this, it made it, it, made, it made it online. So we can only hope at this point. But guys, if you're new to the channel, Madden 21 does come out. And I believe we're only about like 13 days away. Super excited, guys. Make sure to hit that sub button. Come join the family. Turn on that noti bell. If ready for Madden 21, guys, we're going to be dropping a ton of content. So stay tuned for that. But guys, these are the top five guys I'm hoping for. So just give you some guys some like background, some reference points here. Tor Holtz, our current level master, ended up being very great towards the end of the year. Going to be one of the fastest wide receivers after you put Sprinter on him. Great at catching, great at route running. Didn't have the best catching traffic, but that was kind of the only down point on him. He was a nice wide receiver to have all year. He was a good 1 slash 2 slash 3 as you kept upgrading, even a 4. Never really was that bad. And then last year, we had Ricky Williams, who again, was a great running back to have all year. Never was the best one, never was the worst one. More and more not. He was always like a top three back until later in the year he became like a, a beast once the stats were all the way ju like maxed out and he had a uh, high juke high stiff arm high truck high speed he was like everything and then the final one we had three years ago was Ladainian tomlinson which i hope we kind of get again but lt same thing great running back all year again there's always gonna be a new running back that comes out that kind of upgrades over him but then he gets his tokens and then you go right back to him being the best running back but let's get into my top five so i don't guys i don't hold you guys up here for too long and I don't make. The, I want to kind of get to this video as quickly as possible, considering there's quite a there's five players. You know, I can't talk about all of them that extensively here. But guys, moving on to my first one here, we got Vernon Davis. Now, guys, this is the Vernon Davis we got this year, and then I'm gonna show you guys my favorite one of all time. But Vernon Davis is a guy Madden who's always super glitchy. He's kind of like, like nowadays our fast tight ends considered like a kittle. Vernon Davis was always the fastest tight end or Evan Ingram. Vernon Davis is kind of like Evan Ingram S, six foot three, uh, skinny, very very fast, can catch, can route run. They kind of like receivers at tight end. Vernon Davis in the older Maddens was always one of the glitchiest tight ends of the, in the game. Hands down, one of the glitchiest tight ends in the game. It was always super fun to have him, but as he's gotten older and his career is kind of like, you know, he's gotten older, so he's gotten less opportunities, he's played a little bit less, kind of fallen off a little bit, lost a step, and he doesn't get as great of a card. But as you can see, even his veteran card had a pretty decent speed for a tight end. And that's his veteran card. Barely plays that much anymore. And, well, doesn't do the damage he used to, at least. Now, this card always was like a receiver-type card. So, if we go back to the card I really like, it was this one right here. Let me see if I can get this for you guys right over here. I don't know if you guys can see it on the screen. Let's see. Any of these. Preferably, like, this one was great. Here on the right is one of my favorite ones, the Combine Warrior, guys. These cards were insane. This is a Madden 25 one. Over here, again, another Combine Warrior, Madden 15. They gave him the same card almost every year for the most part, guys. But these Vernon Davises were another level of glitchy. You guys don't even understand. Like, this card was super fast, super expensive. And if you didn't have the collected one, if you had the non-collected one, like the base one, the card went for, like, a crazy amount of coins. I'm telling you guys know, this Vernon Davis, if we got another Vernon Davis like this, but a level up master, we can get a level up to 99, he'd probably be the best tight end in Madden most of the year. See, like, that's a good level master to me because most tight ends don't get that speed. So having a guy like Vernon Davis all year, but that I mean everyone, of course, has him. So I guess I kind of axed it a little bit, but not everyone will use him. But I really hope we get Vernon Davis. He's probably one of the last on my list out of all the guys in here. Like, I would love him. No, he's not the last, but he's not He's not the first. I have some other guys I'd like to see more. Next on the list, we got Darrell Revis. Now, Darrell Revis hasn't been in the game in a few years, so it was kind of hard to find a card that I wanted to show here. But, guys, I just see on the right over here. This is Darrell Revis LTD card over here. This card, 98 speed, 97 excel, 99 agility, 102 man coverage, 99 zone, 101 press, 99 play rate, 86 catch. These room cards had above 100 stats. This is a boss UL. Now, guys, I really love Darrell Revis cards. They always have played great whenever I've had them in any Madden ever. One of the greatest corners of all time. We have not gotten any Darrell Revis love in the recent or near future. Like, I don't expect in the near future unless he's the... Uh, Unless he's a love master. That's kind of what I'm hoping for him. I have, we haven't seen him as a legend in years. You guys, next on the list is Reggie Wayne, as you guys can see right here. He was a big wide receiver during the Peyton Manning days on the Colts. You guys know who Reggie Wayne is. I mean, I obviously didn't watch too much football when he was, like, big in the game. But I did play Madden. 
and that is kind of where I got a lot of my knowledge from earlier in the day, especially player names and stuff. So Reggie Wayne has a kind of Jerry Rice feel to me. Good height, great route runner, not the fastest, but fast enough. Great fundamental type player. Hopefully we can see Reggie Wayne this year. He's a depth position, so which would be perfect for a level up master because he's depth. And that just, of course, means that he can be the wide receiver one, two, three, or four. So you can always buy other wide receivers and not worry about phasing this one out. Next, we got Luke Keekley. I just feel like he makes sense. Coming off of it, he retired because of concussions and some health concerns. And then maybe just he wasn't feeling it anymore. But Luke Keekley would be a nice tribute card considering he did just retire. I can see him getting a nice level up master to kind of like give a little tribute to Luke Keekley's career. It would be nice to see. Now, the only issue with Keekley, I mean, he is a depth position, which is a positive. But he is usually one of these slower back, slower middle linebackers. Like, not, like, completely slow, but, like, the next... He'll be, like, two off or three off speed from the fastest linebacker at all times. I hope that they give him good ratings. If they give him good ratings, then it wouldn't really matter. He'd be one of the best ones. But, again, we can't really gauge him just yet because we don't know if this year is going to be the year of the fast user linebacker or the fundamental linebacker that could fill the lanes. But next is LaDainian Tomlinson. If you guys know LT, one of the greatest running backs of all time, or at least had one of the greatest performances or seasons of all time a few times. Consider, con, not, entirely, not entirely sure people consider him, but I would consider him one of the best running backs. Now, the thing with the Damian Thomason is that he's kind of like a McCaffrey build. He can he can receive, he can juke, he can truck, he can outrun you, he can jump, he can do almost everything. He's not just an athletic beast at running back. So it'd be really cool to see him again because we don't typically get running backs like this that often. Like he's kind of like like we have Bo Jackson, just that crazy power fast animal. The Damian Thomason's kind of like that as well, but in a different way. Like, he has that McCaffrey feel while Bo Jackson has more of that, like, big running back, run you over type feel. And he's a smaller back, so I don't know how that's going to help this year, but should be pretty cool with his uh, signature movements with the new skill stick and everything. But, guys, move on to my rankings of these guys. So, coming in last, I'm probably putting Luke Keekley. Now, again, there's just too much uncertainty. I'm not entirely sure if he's going to be the most dominant middle linebacker or if he'll be up there, but not the most. So, I mean, again, still going to be a great option, but out of these guys, there's some pretty great options here. Coming at number three, I'm probably going to put Reggie Wayne. Number four, sorry. Reggie Wayne, great wide receiver, going to be super great. But the thing is with him, I just like the other three guys ahead of him a little bit better. And, uh, of course, he's not going to be the fastest. But, again, if he's like a Jerry Rice, it's not going to really matter. Coming at number three, Vernon Davis. I'm leaving just the way he is right there. I would love a Vernon Davis. If it was just up to me, he'd probably be number one. But I have to remind myself that he is a tight end. Um, the way it's going to impact the people, the, you know, the Madden community, it may not be the same way these other guys can. Number two, LaDainian Tomlinson, guys. He's a running back. I love to put him higher, but I just can't justify making him number one, especially when running back's a locked position where you can really only you really only use one guy these days. I mean, you can have a backup, but you mainly use one guy. So if you buy another guy over him, it's going to feel dumb. Like, that's when people get stuck not wanting to buy a new running back because they feel stupid wasting coins on a new one when you have this one. But number one is going to be Darrell Rivas. Great, great cornerback. He'll be perfect to be the second cornerback because everyone buys a lockdown corner every year. Everyone buys a Jalen Ramsey. They buy a Patrick Peterson, or wherever they deem, you know, Byron Jones. But, Darrell Rivas would be perfect, because when you buy your Ramsey, you also have a Darrell, and then you have two lockdown corners, and then you can just put a fast guy in the slot, slash nickel, and there you go, you're good to go on the defensive side. But guys, that's about it for the video, hope you guys enjoyed, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification, boys, come join the family, give this video a big thumbs up, come stay tuned for, of course, the new Madden season in 13 days, guys, super hype, that's it guys, I'm out, peace.